good afternoon dear students we are going to discuss about first experiment today now in the last uh, experiment i just gave you an outline of how to identify an unknown organism okay so we have to study the identification of a known organism and that to four different organisms see you when you are given a culture or when you have a new type of organism you need to identify what organism it is if you have isolated it from some source like from urine sample or from any other such kind of sample if you have isolated an organism you want to identify that organism so let us study today identification if the organism is e coli what are the different test uh yeah that to need to be performed or what are the different kind of results that are obtained okay now what is the general identification chart for an unknown organism if you have an unknown organism first you perform gram staining okay when you perform gram staining especially uh, we go for gram staining only in case the organism is not getting stained properly we can go for acid fast staining okay but the general procedure is go for gram staining and in case of gram staining you need to know or you come to know whether the organism is gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria and at the same time you can observe the shape of the organism so whether it is a bacilli or a cocci that also can be checked if the organism is gram positive cocci then you look at the shape of the organism look at the arrangement if it is arranged in bunches it is staphylococci if it is arranged in chains then it is streptococci and then proceed for other tests depending upon the shape of the organism and the arrangement of the organism whether it is is in cluster whether it is in pairs whether it is in chain you go for other test sometimes we also need to perform acid fast staining so that we come to know whether the organism is acid fast or non acid fast if it is non acid fast okay if it is acid fast it can be mycobacterium tuberculosis or lepre or what and then we proceed for some other test okay now after performing gram staining we go for motility and check whether the organism is motile or non motile motility can be performed by traditional method that is by hanging drop method so you you will come to know whether the organism is motile or non motile cocci mostly are non motile now if it is a gram negative bacilli then whether it is motile or non motile if it is non motile you can differentiate organism you i mean can judge at least you can just interpret what kind of organism it can be like that okay so depending on motility also we can proceed so whether it is motile or non motile nowadays motility test can also be performed by using motility agar you to just fill the meat prepare the medium fill it in a test tube after sterilization and using a straight wire inoculate into the medium it is not a solid medium uh, it contains less of agar so it is kind of a gel semi solid inoculate the organism with the with the help of a straight wire in the center of the tube uh, if uh, you see the growth only along the straight line it is non motile and if the growth spreads okay uh, uh, like a tree or like a root then it is a motile organism then after performing motility go for cultural uh, characteristics find out the cultural characteristics of the organism by inoculating the organism on selective medias right Uh, you can cultivate on nutrient agar or nutrient broth or any kind of a specific media as depending upon your gram staining and motility results you can select a media for cultural characteristics okay then you have to perform biochemical characteristic in case of biochemical reaction we perform a fermentation test of sugars like we check whether the organism ferments lactose or glucose or mannitol or sucrose or with acid only with both acid and gas or there is no acid production like that so we go for biochemical test and then we also use triple sugar iron agar okay to check acid production gas production h2s production also then uh, we can perform imv classifications to know whether the organism um, is indole mr positive or vp citrate positive or what so imv classification is also done along with that we also check the production of enzymes by organism like whether it produces catalase most of the organism are catalase positive then whether it produces urease enzyme or not or urease reaction is given in a very short period of time it can be proteus it can be sres okay if it is negative then it can be e coli like that so we also go for urease test 
and catalase test. Uh, sometimes um, oxidase test is also done, nitrate reduction test is also done to check the, I mean to identify the organism. Okay, so after performing biochemical test or after getting the result of all these tests, the standard procedure is to refer Burgi's manual and find out the organism. Okay, and if you further want to confirm what organism, you can go for serological test or you can do PCR test to identify the unknown organism. Okay, uh, let us now study how, what kind of results are obtained if the organism is Ishersha coli. Now, if you go for morphological characteristic of the organism and you perform gram staining, then if it is E. coli, if it is E. coli, you get gram negative cocobacilli and they are sluggishly motile. E. coli is sluggishly motile. So, morphology of E. coli, you can see here, it looks like this gram negative cocobacilli and it is having peritrichous flagella. The organism is sluggishly motile. So, Organism is cocobacilla and sluggishly motile. If it is non-motile, um, it can be shigella, it can be klebsiella, like that. So, by performing gram staining and motility, you can at least uh, make a, you can say, rough judgment what kind of organism it can be. And depending upon your guess, your interpretation, you go for uh, you select the uh, selective medias, okay. You choose the selective medias for cultural characteristics, okay. If here you get gram-negative bacilli, okay, not cocobacilli, gram-negative, not short rods. If you get gram-negative bacilli and if they are actively motile, it can be salmonella also, okay. So, depending upon the gram uh, nature and the motility test, you choose selective media. If you feel it can be Ishersha coli, then we can, uh, Ishersha E. coli is a facultatively anaerobic organism. Optimum growth is like 37 degrees Celsius, right? Optimum. It can grow from, uh, uh, in a variety of range of temperature, but the optimum temperature for growth of E. coli is 37 degree Celsius. Now, first thing we can do is, we can use McConkie's agar, right? Now, uh, inoculate the organism on McConkie's agar. Right, McConkie's agar is a differential media. Basically, it is a differential media. It can be selective also. It is a differential media which helps you to differentiate between lactose fermenting and lactose non-fermenting organism. So, if you are confused with your, uh, I mean, gram staining result, whether it is E. coli or salmonella, if you are getting confused, then you just inoculate the organism on McConkie's agar. If you get pink colored colonies, organism is lactose fermenting. It cannot be salmonella like that. Okay. So, because salmonella is lactose non-fermenting organism. So, E. coli produces pink colored colonies on McConkie's agar because sugar lactose is present in the medium. As soon as the organism is inoculated, it utilizes the sugar lactose and acid and acid production takes place. With the production of acid, the color in the, uh, the neutral red indicator present in the medium will, re, uh, will release its color, okay. So, when you inoculate E. coli on McConkie's agar, the organism grows, utilizes the sugar, ferments the sugar lactose present in the medium. When sugar is fermented, acid is produced and pH of the medium drops down. When pH of the medium drops down because of production of acid, the neutral red indicator present in the McConkie's agar will release its color and organic color of the colonies will appear pink. So, why E. coli produces pink colored colonies? Because it ferments lactose present in the medium. Then we most of the time choose other selective medias that is EMB agar or endo agar or any other. Uh, simply EMB or endo agar can be sufficient at times, right? So, when the organism is inoculated on eosin methylene blue agar, E. coli produces dark purple centered colonies with green metallic sheen sometimes green metallic sheen may not be formed but purple you, you can say black nucleated colonies are produced by e coli if you look at m endo agar then here also colonies produce metallic sheen and uh, they the organism actually metabolizes lactose and produces aldehyde and acid okay so, it produces metallic sheen on EMB agar. You can see the upper plate. Green metallic sheen is produced by E. coli. If you look at endo agar, golden 
metallic sheen is produced by organism again purple dark colonies with golden metallic sheen are produced on endo agar then we go for after cultural characteristics if you you have to also perform biochemical test in case of biochemical test we perform first sugar fermentation test wherein we take four test tubes containing different sugars one tube contains glucose sugar another lactose sugar another mannitol and sucrose in each of the tube we have placed a, a durham's tube in inverted position to check whether organism produces gas or not to check whether organism produces acid or not we add indicator into the medium the indicator can be phenol red the indicator can be androdase reagent the indicator can be bromothymol blue okay so all the four sugars are inoculated with the unknown test organism and incubated at 37 degrees for 24 hours and after 24 hours you check for acid and gas production if it is equally if the organism is equally it ferments all the sugars with acid and gas okay so both acid as well as gas is produced by the organism when acid is produced by the organism the color of the indicator changes because it indicates acid production and if gas is produced the gas gets collected in the durham's tube say for example if you use bromothymol blue indicator initially when you prepare the medium it is green in color because the ph of the medium is neutral 7 when you inoculate it with the organism and if the organism ferments lactose sugar or glucose sugar acids are produced okay because of that ph of the medium changes and because of changing the ph towards acidic side the color of the indicator changes from green to yellow okay so initially before inoculation if it is green and after inoculation and incubation if the color of the media changes to yellow then organism is lactose fermenting or glucose fermenting it produces acid and gas production can be checked in the durham's tube like you can see in the central tube okay Uh, the side uh, the tubes which are present on two uh, sides like right and left are not showing green color because the indicator added in the medium is different okay so the central tube you can see yellow color with a bubble in the uh, durham's tube so that shows acid and gas production okay now how do you produce lactose sugar glucose sugar you prepare nutrient broth and add the respective sugar if you add lactose sugar into nutrient broth it is lactose broth if you add glucose sugar in the uh, nutrient broth it is glucose sugar like that 1% sugar can be added so after performing i mean um, sugar fermentation test we also go for triple sh- sugar iron agar test now tri- uh, in tsi agar the na- as the name suggests triple sugar it contains three different sugars sh- sh- glucose sucrose and lactose glucose is also called as dextrose you can see here it contains glucose sucrose and lactose now what you have to do is when you prepare the medium okay when you prepare this medium this is your test tube you prepare tsi agar add it into the test tube and uh, you can say close the mouth of the test tube sterilize the tube and prepare slant and butt while preparing this medium we just don't prepare the whole slant like this okay it is not just a slant when you prepare the medium you take a test tube okay this much is the slant and the lower portion is all kind of a standing medium solid this portion is called as butt and this portion of the medium is called as slant okay so while using triple sugar iron agar as you can see in this test tubes you can see a butt portion also and a slant portion also you can see a butt portion also and a slant portion also so butt means the one which is in standing position okay and slant means the one uh, which you can see in the slanting position right now you to check whether the organism how what kind of reactions are obtained on tsi agar here there are two parts where we have to check one part is slant another part is butt okay so this is the slant and this is the butt okay so check whether acid gas production takes place in slant as well as in butt okay look at the fourth test tube suppose this is first test tube 
okay this is first test tube this one is second this is third fourth and fifth look at the fourth tube that is d a b c d d in this tube you can see color of the slant changes to yellow as well as the butt changes to yellow initially the color of the medium is slight brown reddish brown okay the color of the medium is reddish brown why because it contains phenol red indicator right and the ph of the medium is neutral so reddish brown color is there in the medium if if you inoculate it with the organism if the organism is in uh, e coli it will ferment all the three sugars present in the medium with both acid and gas so sugar in the slant as well as sugar in the butt are fermented so the whole slant as well as the butt becomes yellow in color why because the color of the indicator phenol red changes to yellow when acids are produced so because all the three sugars are fermented the whole slant as well as butt changes into yellow but e coli at the same time also produces acid uh, uh, sorry uh, also produces gas so how can you check gas production in a test tube containing tsi agar you can see here the slant and the butt are lifted up you can see here the slant is lifted up right now because the slant is lifted up you can see a hollow in gas that gets collected in the medium so gas has been collected in the medium sometimes the agar cracks also right so you can see here the first tube that is shown by e coli the second third fourth are shown by another organisms right now imbic classification uh, we have already studied this in second year and we have a separate video also uh, which indicates um, whether uh, i mean acid and i mean uh, indole production and all by the organism so we have an imbic classification video you can refer to that also so here if the organism is e coli indol and methyl red test are positive bogus proscor and citrate test are negative okay and tsi is fermented both slant and butt were fermented with acid as well as gas but there is no h2s production if there is h2s production then uh, ferric sulfide is formed fes is formed okay and that blackening of the medium takes place organism produces enzyme catalase and it does not produce urease enzyme so on the basis of the morphological cultural and biochemical characteristic it is confirmed or it is interpreted that the unknown organism is e coli that is how we perform the identification of e coli you can see here indole test positive by e coli cherry red ring is formed methyl red test positive bright red color is formed vp citrate negative so no red color in vp test and citrate agar is green in color so indole mr positive vp citrate negative okay that is all about the